it's it's interesting. What what is the Fed's goal? The Fed is in charge of controlling the monetary supply, and they work with presidential administrations. Uh, and so, okay, let's let's just put this in perspective. No president, no administration wants to see a crash. Not, wants to see an economic slowdown on their watch. And so, let's assume that the Fed came out and said, "America, we were wrong." Inflation was not transitory. We caused inflation. So we're going to do the right thing, and we are going to try to fight inflation to help the American people. What's going to happen? Stock market will crash. Real estate market will crash. Because what does it mean to fight inflation? You've got to contract the monetary supply. right? Inflation is inflating the monetary supply, increasing the monetary supply. So contracting the monetary supply would mean taking dollars out of the system, which would mean raising interest rates, maybe significantly. If you do that, you're going to see market crash. You, you, you're going to see markets come down because it's going to be more expensive to buy a home. It's going to be more expensive to buy a stock. It's going to be more expensive to do a lot of things. Businesses are going to have a harder time borrowing money, and that will cause an economic slowdown. They don't want to see that happen. No, no administration wants to see that happen on their, their watch because they don't have the guts to do what's really good for the economy long term. See, crashes are a refresh. It's a way to get rid of bad assets. It's a way to get rid of toxic assets. It's a way to get rid of bad investments. But, you know, we saw in 2008 the whole idea of too big to fail. I mean, things are getting bigger and bigger. And this too big to fail idea is becoming even bigger. But you have to let the bad assets fail. If you don't, then the bad assets keep getting bigger and bigger. And so, you know, what what are they trying to do? Well, one, they don't want to look bad. They, they don't want to trigger a slowdown. That's why it was so hard for the Fed to start tapering the asset purchases. They were buying $150 billion worth of assets every single month from 2020 into 2021. In the early part of 2020, they were actually buying more, but then they tapered it down to $150 billion. And they did that through the to the end of 2021, which is when they finally started tapering. Why did it take so long? They were worried about a taper tantrum. A taper tantrum is when you see a mini stock market crash because they pull the money printer. They stop pouring money into the markets. If they stop pouring money into the markets, well, that causes asset prices to go down. Now, we were fortunate that we didn't see the sort of tap, taper tantrum because I think people expected that it was going to happen. Um, they had talked about it for so long, but that's why they didn't do it. They said it again and again and again. The reason why we can't stop these asset purchases is because we're worried about a taper tantrum. We don't want to see that happen. So who are they looking out for? The investors. They're looking out for the people who are wealthy which is why, again, you need to be financially educated. The next issue is born on a broader economic level. The United States government has $29 trillion with the national debt. They can't afford it. So how do you pay back debt that you can't afford? Well, you could increase your income. And in that case, that would mean the government has to raise taxes. Now, they're, they're working on that, but they can't, they're not raising taxes to the level that, that uh, President Biden would have liked, which he originally proposed. Uh, but both parties kind of agreed that they were, those are too high and it would really hurt the economy by raising taxes that much. Mm-hmm. And so, you, but, but you're never going to be able to raise taxes enough to cover government spending. Government spending keeps increasing. Taxes don't increase fast enough. And so you have now left this national deficit, this national debt, which is very high. So how do you pay that back? Well, if you can't do it through raising money, through taxes, then you can inflate it away. And that's what they're trying to do. So the way that you pay it back now is by paying it back with cheaper dollars, by paying it back with these dollars, which now are worth less. Because now if I owe, let's just assume, a million dollars on a fixed rate mortgage today, and then inflation happens, well, now my debt isn't as expensive because the money that I have to pay doesn't feel as painful because the value of each dollar has gone down. Maybe I'm earning more money. Maybe my assets are worth more. So that's what the government's trying to do. As you create more inflation, the value of $29 trillion starts to go down because now they can pay back this money with cheaper dollars. So, you know, it, it's it's a kind of a sticky situation where they're trying to play, I, I call it chicken. They're trying to increase the GDP, the economy, but the way they're trying to do that is by spending more. Our debt has already grown way faster than a GDP. And so it's like this game of chicken. They're like, okay, our economy is not growing fast enough, so what do we do? Well, let's spend more. 
cheaper dollars, more inflation to hopefully grow our GDP. But what's happening is our debt's growing way faster than our economy. And I mean, just look at it from a consumer standpoint. If you go and you start spending money at the mall and you spend money you don't have, what's gonna happen? Your, your uh, credit card bill is gonna start to rise. As your credit card bill starts to rise and you can't afford it, well, now your minimum payments start to rise. So what can you do? Well, you can earn more money, which is what you're supposed to do, which you should do, to start paying it off. Or in this case, they just keep spending more money, hoping that this extra spending is going to help pay it down. So it's, it's a tricky situation where they're, they're trying to play chicken and they're hoping that it will work out. And hopefully it does for the sake of the dollar and the economy. But if it doesn't work out, then they kind of have this range of scenarios from good to bad. And the good isn't even that good, it's that inflation just cools down instead of it goes away. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love and while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide on how to start generating passive income for free. All you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.